today about the treatment of maladaptive daydreaming. I've been receiving a lot of emails and requests from people to advise them on how to ameliorate their suffering associated with maladaptive daydreaming. Well, uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, we are really making baby steps at understanding this uh, unique uh, phenomena and, and, and disturbance. Um, we will be soon um, publishing um, a, a small series of, uh, of articles that we believe uh, constitute good research on uh, the, uh, the concept, uh, the phenomena itself, and it will help establish it as a legitimate um, uh, disorder that deserves the attention and future research of other scientists and clinicians. But uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about what is there to treat, what is actually disordered in maladaptive daydreaming. Um, some of you have heard me uh, express myself in saying that it is basically a, um, a gift, a talent that some people have and some people don't. Um, it is a capacity to imagine ex very, in very vivid terms um, uh, fantasies that are made up and sometimes get a life of their own. And the immersion is so satisfying and complete that it feels as real as reality. Although people maintain an, an ability and a capacity to differentiate between what's real and what is not. Um, the problem is that uh, this extensive form of daydreaming becomes uh, an issue when people prefer to do it uh, uh, rather than perhaps engage in their academic uh, or professional activities or what is even more common they would prefer socializing in their minds with imagined uh, uh, individuals and friends rather than engage in real life uh, relationships so as a clinician uh, I think that I would first like to know what is the underlying issue and what is the underlying cause for maladaptive daydream. My sense is that there is more than one pathway that leads to maladaptive daydream. At first when I first uh, published the the, uh, the original uh, 2002 paper on on this concept um, it was based on a group of clients that I treated, uh, they were all survivors of childhood neglect and abuse. And I thought the phenomena is uh, some sort of a compensation for uh, an intolerable life that they've had, that they had developed as children and uh, maintained as a main form of coping. But later on, studies uh, that, that came out, uh, two or three studies that came after that, showed that, uh, in fact, um, childhood neglect and abuse could be a significant factor in the development of M uh, maladaptive daydreaming uh, only for a portion of people who uh, are coping with this disorder, about a quarter, uh, one out of every four people who struggles with uh, maladaptive daydreaming would have had an adverse childhood. Um, but the majority, um, in the majority of cases, this is not, not the, the main issue. Uh, many people with maladaptive daydreaming uh, talk about the uh, addictive uh, character of this behavior. It is so rewarding uh, you know, to be in complete control of what's what's happening and to immerse yourself oneself in a sort of an interesting life or an interesting set of circumstances that uh, can be altered or stopped at will uh, and feels very real uh, must be uh, an experience uh, that is extremely enjoyable and indeed it is to the extent that many people I've talked to uh, talk to me about the addictive properties of this behavior but even in addiction, but you know that even in the treatment of substance abuse or other forms of addictions, the question of what under what is the underlying issue is 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 pertinent. One needs to work at 
quitting, but one also needs to understand what does this uh, uh, addiction uh, serve, what function, what role. Um, and this sometimes becomes obvious only after one gives up uh, this form of addiction. So I would presume that many of my listeners who are engaging in MD, uh, if stopped, if forced to stop, would feel, uh, of course, the urge to do it, uh, the withdrawal symptoms. But some may also feel issues like um, uh, boredom or loneliness that could serve as hints as to what is actually wrong in their lives. Um, addictive behaviors uh, such as nail biting or, uh, or uh, hair pulling <clears throat> um, are said to have features that are common to uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, so here too we're talking about a compulsion to do uh, a mental behavior that is rewarded by the pleasure of, of the uh, maladaptive daydreaming. So the treatment, uh, if, if indeed there is an OCD mechanism at work here, the treatment conceivably could include a, a medication that is known to be helpful for OCD. And indeed, um, there is one single case study uh, out there uh, that reported a successful resolution of, uh, of pathological uh, daydreaming, maladaptive daydreaming, in a person that had uh, a normal childhood. Uh, and this medication uh, really uh, did, made a difference, a big difference. So, but, you know, uh, this uh, result needs to be replicated, and I'm sure it will work only for those who, whose disorder indeed have these OCD features. How do we identify them? It's not quite clear yet. Um, however, in talking with, uh, uh, with, with many people who are struggling with this disorder, it is apparent that for many, uh, the underlying issues uh, pertain to loneliness, shyness, um, introversion, uh, social anxiety, social phobia, uh, people feeling really uncomfortable. Uh, interacting with other people, feeling uh, inadequate or uh, at, at, uh, extremely uh, at, at, uh, you know, uneasy when they experience themselves as a center of attention. Um, well, these are, these are characterological issues usually. They could be also be laced with uh, anxiety. Uh, characteristics uh, that could be perhaps helped with, with some education. But issues of uh, introversion, shyness, uh, social phobia are also helped with uh, cognitive behavior therapy that actually uh, works towards enhancing skills and encouraging the individual to go out and polish up those skills, interact, with other people and slowly uh, allow the um, uh, automatic uh, anxiety that uh, accompanies social situations to, to dwindle uh, and to, and to um, reduce in, in intensity. Uh, as a principle, I believe that um, uh, avoidance of fear situations uh, perpetuate uh, the disability. So people who, who are shy and lonely and have a very rich social life in their, in their fantasies actually avoid the real situation. And this is why many of them are actually, despite the addiction and the pleasure derived from daydreaming, actually feel disappointed at themselves or feel a sense of emptiness um, even after a very long and you know satisfying series of, of uh, imaginings. 
because um, apparently there's a limit to how much we can feel soothed and supported and loved by imaginary figures. So psychotherapy that will work at changing those characterological uh, issues and that will help uh, clients dare and take chances in the real world uh, could be probably very helpful. And, and some of the people I've been talking to who share with me their maladaptive daydreaming experiences tell me that the only time where they do not daydream is when they are with others when they interact with others. So uh, there's a subgroup, by the way, of people who are fine socially and still like to, uh, to daydream a lot. Uh, but they seem to be more in control over this and they know that if they go out, call a friend, uh, engage in, in, in some kind, of a, uh, some kind of, of a discussion or conversation, uh, pick up the phone and call a friend, then that immediately stops their daydreaming and perhaps sets them off into some kind of a interactive experience that um, is incompatible with daydreaming. Uh, the other idea that is um, uh, associated with the treatment of MD probably relates to this group that I originally thought comprised everybody who daydreams excessively and these are the survivors of childhood neglect and childhood abuse. Uh, I have a great interest in dissociative disorders and I know that uh, the dissociative clients that I treat have resorted to disconnecting uh, from the reality, uh, turning it off uh, and going elsewhere in their minds uh, allowing other parts of their personality to deal with the hardship of life but uh, with other parts pretending that uh, the adversity has never happened. This is also, you might say, a form of a fantasy. It's a negative fantasy because it is a fantasy about the abuse not having ever happened. Uh, so I thought that maladaptive daydreaming is, uh, is, is some kind of a, a version of this. And for, for, for those particular clients who have been neglected and abused, it could be. So, but in, in, in treating these clients, uh, first of all, one must uh, uh, clarify and understand again the role of, of, of this mental activity in which some experience themselves as rescuers, as heroes, um, as competent, as warriors, as fighters. Uh, for many, these are really com com compensatory mental experiences that are extremely rewarding, particularly in contrast to what uh, they've experienced in life and uh, often the emptiness of their current uh, social life. So for these group of clients, uh, I perhaps would address the daydreaming at the very end of therapy and really work first at uh, uh, um, repairing their abilities to bond and attach themselves first in therapy and then with trusted others and then slowly work with them towards um, uh, giving up uh, their, their preferred uh, mental activity. In conclusion, I think that you know, we have several ideas of, about how to work with this, uh, with this disorder. First, we need, of course, to establish it as something that uh, the professional community would know and understand. And then we will have to be able to identify uh, diagnostically the different subtypes of maladaptive daydreaming in terms of the different pathways that lead to it and based on that to try to derive some treatment ideas and treatment protocols and demonstrate their efficacy, their efficiency uh, in research. So there's a lot of work uh, to be done but in the meantime don't hesitate to talk to your therapist about or to seek out help. Talk to them about this uh, problem that you have be the one who disseminates information and that it is real, that uh, thousands out there are struggling with it and uh, supporting each other in forums and support groups. And try to work with your therapist at identifying the underlying problems that perhaps are maintaining 
uh, this, uh, this, this order. So I wish you good luck and perhaps I'll be back with some other ideas if I have anything new to say. Bye-bye.